Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include US criticises EU rules on genetically modified crops as unnecessary. EU is looking for a better solution for scrapping ships. Further criticism from the USA on EU wine labelling. Impact of the financial and economic crisis on human rights plus EU proposal over concern over radioactive substances in drinking water. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The United States has criticised as unnecessary European Union rules against genetically modified US crop imports as it prepares to enter free trade talks with the EU. Well, it's probably just payback rhetoric for last week's slowdown call from France over this EU-US free trade agreement. This article considers the differences which are significant in local attitudes towards genetically modified crops in Europe and across in the USA. The majority of European ships are scrapped years later in Southeast Asian coastal junkyards under questionable working conditions and environmental controls. The EU is looking for ways to improve the situation. A 7 kilometer long stretch of beach in Bangladesh is providing work for around 150,000 people and the largest ship scrapyard in the world has emerged near the city of Chittagong. Around 40% of high seas vessels removed from service worldwide are stripped down and broken apart here each year. Sales of doors, kitchens or beds from the ships is booming around Chittagong. Further squabbling between the US and EU has ensued after the United States criticised the European Union's restrictions on wine labelling, saying they hinder US wine exports. The US Trade Representative's office said the EU's policy of seeking exclusive use of so-called traditional terms, such as tawny, ruby, reserve, classic and chateau on wine labels, severely restricts the ability of non-EU wine producers to use common, descriptive and commercially valuable terms to describe their products sold in the EU. Looks to me as though this free trade agreement is developing nicely. Pass me another GM burger and refill my Chianti Reserve, will you? At last, the Orc scribes from the Dark Towers of Strasbourg have been summoned to action. In our legislation section today, we look at this new report in which the EU considers the plight, from a human rights perspective, of the poor folks of Greece, Spain and Cyprus, etc., who have lost their jobs, public services, homes and even their savings. The report concludes with this groundbreaking statement of wisdom. Global unemployment rose by 27 million since the beginning of the financial crisis in 2008. The EU supports the global introduction of a financial transaction tax. Such a tax would provide an innovative financing mechanism to support development, which in turn contributes to the universal fulfilment of economic and social rights. Right then, so uh, the Tobin tax is implemented. It's all going to be (laughs) tickety-boo. Who writes this stuff? Okay, grab your Geiger counter. No, really, this article is a very concerning article. The report in our legislation section highlights concerns the EU Commission has with regard to radioactive substances entering the drinking water supply. A quote from the legislation report, Drinking water contamination by radioactive substances may occur through accidental releases of radioactivity or through improper disposal practices. Water systems that are vulnerable to this type of contamination undergo extensive monitoring for radioactive contamination to ensure that the water is safe for drinking. There are many regions in Europe where the geological and hydrological features are such that the presence of naturally occurring radioactive substances is of concern. So far, the requirements for monitoring tritium and total indicative dose under Council Directive 98-83-EC have not been implemented. Okay, so what this really says is that either the geological and or water table conditions increase the probability that radioactive substances may be ingested by humans, but because of the disparity of regional geography, nobody has bothered to do any checking. Well, now that's reassuring. (laughs) 
Today in our video library, I want to take an opportunity to revisit our Eurocon documentary series which looks at how citizens have been misled over the intention of the EU single market. In this episode, we consider whether the UK people are being given a true evaluation of the Eurozone single market. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, The Unit, on Google+. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>